Today's scripture reading comes from 1 Kings chapter 2, verses 10 through 12, and chapter 3, verses 3 through 14. So David slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of David. And the days that David reigned over Israel were 40 years. Seven years reigned he in Hebron, and thirty and three years reigned he in Jerusalem. Then sat Solomon upon the throne of David his father, and his kingdom was established greatly. And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of David his father. Only he sacrificed and burnt incense in high places. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there. For that was the great high place. A thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon the altar. In Gibeon the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, Thou hast shown unto thy servant David my father great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness, that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne, as it is this day. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in, and thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted by my multitude. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, and that I may discern between good and bad, for who is able to judge this thy so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord, that Solomon had asked this thing. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast thou asked for richness for thyself, nor hast asked the life of thine enemies, but hast asked for thy understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, but riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. And if thou wilt walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen thy days. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us pray. <clears throat> oh, gracious God, we are grateful always for an awareness of your presence in our lives, ways that you move within us in our hearts and minds to bring us to an awareness of your presence and what is your will. But we confess to you that that's not always easy. It's not easy to at times discern what we should do and not always easy to discern at times even good from evil in this world. But we pray always that we might be open, that we might hear your voice, and that we might follow. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. 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 Well, we all know that making decisions is never easy, especially the tough ones of life. Um, uh, should I retire? Should I retire? Should I not retire? Um, what work should I do? Um, where should I live? Uh, who should I marry? Um, should I go to college, not go to college? Um, probably all of us have struggled with decisions, have we not? Throughout our course of life, and trying to discern at times what is God's will for my life. And this little thing my dad taught me, it sometimes helped. I mean, uh, the thing about it I would tell him at times is, you know, I can have over here on the right hand column the reasons why I shouldn't there may be 20 of them and the only thing I have over there the reason I should is because I want to <laughs> <laughs> and I would say how can that I want to outweigh all that other stuff um, and sometimes you learn that what you want to you later realize is 
probably what you shouldn't have. Uh, but such is the challenge of decision making uh, that we have throughout our lives. Today's lesson from 1 Kings is about the ascension of King Solomon to the throne of Israel um, as king over the Hebrew people. Um, David, King David, great King David has died. Uh, Solomon is the son of David and therefore he's a natural heir to the throne. Uh, but he also has certain charisma uh, characteristics that um, is the reason he is chosen to become the next king, King Solomon. And as we read the lesson this morning, what is interesting to note is that when chosen, Solomon asks God for discernment, for the ability to discern. Um, between what is good and bad, between what is right and wrong. Um, and he doesn't ask for things that are selfish, the scripture points out. He doesn't ask for long life. He doesn't ask for riches. He doesn't ask for honor. He doesn't ask to be able to defeat his enemies. He asks for the wisdom of God to be able to discern well. If he's going to govern God's people, then he needs to be able to discern wisely what is the best and thing for God's people and for him as ruler over God's people. He's not interested in his own private interests, but the gift of discerning, discerning what is God's will above all. What is, as one who is king, what is best for the common good is what he seeks to discern. God's wisdom, spiritual discernment, does not come to Solomon by his own efforts, the scripture points out. Um, he doesn't discern well because of who Solomon is. But the scripture is clear to note that Solomon is given the gift of discernment. It's not an inequality of Solomon's but it's something that God gives him so that he may lead out of obedience to God rather than by his own design. Um, and that requires incredible humility because it means that we desire God's direction above our own desires and inclination. Uh, we desire what God believes is the right decision to to guide his people, to govern his people. Um, and so it takes into consideration the good of others because what Solomon asks for is wisdom to discern how to govern the people. Um, not his own interest, but wisdom for the common good, right? Um, now Solomon didn't always discern well, as the scripture will point out to us. For example, Solomon marries an Egyptian princess, which was against Deuteronomic law, against the law of God's people. Yet he did it. Um, furthermore, um, he built her a fancy palace before he rebuilt the temple. And God didn't like that. His word to Solomon is, that is your self-interest. You go building a fancy palace for your new wife rather than make it a priority to rebuilding the temple in Jerusalem. So it took Solomon a while to um, appreciate the gift had been given. It took Solomon a while to, um, to learn how to appropriately use that gift of discernment which God had given to him. What's one of the best examples of the wisdom of Solomon that we all know? You remember it? Remember the story? Two mothers. The, uh, the two women yeah. gave, born, gave birth to babies within days apart. And uh, during the night, the one woman rolls on the child and the child dies, smothered and dies. And so she sneaks over to the other woman and takes that woman's baby and puts the dead baby of hers into the arms of 
the woman sleeping and takes the live baby. And when they wake up, you know, the mother knows that this isn't her child. <laughs> and so the decision is brought before King Solomon, right? The two women are brought with the baby, and what happens? He said, cut it in half. That's right. The wisdom of Solomon, discerning what is the Spirit of God, says, okay, let's see if we can resolve this. Um, we'll just cut the baby in half. We'll give you each half. And of course, how does his wisdom win out? The real mother says no. Exactly. The real mother says no, give it to the other woman. Ah, what a wonderful example of the wisdom of King Solomon. Discernment, the ability to decide between truth and untruth, between right and wrong. And in our own culture, in the culture that we live in, that's not always easy, is it? There are a lot of fuzzy places, a lot of gray places, where we have difficult making decisions about what we think is right or wrong or truth or untruth. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, the Apostle Paul writes, Examine everything carefully. Hold fast to that which is good. Abstain from evil. Do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see if they're from God. Discerning intersects Christian life at every moment. Sometimes in an easy way, sometimes in a difficult way. Without careful discernment, we're tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, writes Paul. And indeed, discernment is a spiritual grace, as he says in 1 Corinthians 12. Spiritual discernment, the Greek word, is diakrisis, which is a way of saying help avoid crisis. <laughs> Diacrisis, to help avoid crisis. So we don't discern well, it often leads to crisis, doesn't it? And we can't see well. Keep persons from being led astray or making decisions based on, I want to, as opposed to all the others that have to be weighed up for a larger or for a common good. Spiritual discernment, the last thing I'd like to say today and apply it to some degree for, for us is how does it happen? How, how can we um, encourage them? In, in what ways do we come about with spiritual discernment? One, of course, is prayer. Uh, listening to that inner voice uh, of God's spirit. <coughs> Uh, to be directed by God's truth rather than something that may be cultural or secular, uh, but to, to, to seek to discern what, where is God leading us, what is the voice of God saying to us about a decision we need to make. Um, and in that making of a decision to guard against things that are within us that may prejudice, prejudice us and not allow us to listen well uh, to a decision that needs to be made. The second one and the other one I'd like to mention today because I think it's probably one of the most essential uh, in, in spiritual discernment, and that is utilize community. Use community. For about 15 years of my ministry, I was part of what was called a discipleship, a discipleship covenant group. About seven of us that would come together for one hour once a week. The primary purpose was to hold each other accountable for our Christian faith, the way we were living our Christian lives. But I also found over those years that this small community helped me discern. Discern things I could never have discerned on my own because I welcomed their praying with me, talking with me about it, uh, to help arrive at a decision. That's something that Antioch ought to think about. Think about this, think about Mary Jones. Um, the faith and commitment that she's had to this congregation for as I kid her about, 150 years. Um, 
She's given her life to this church. It's her family. And I've found in the past week in trying to help make decisions about what's best for Mary to be able to talk with some of you all about it. To be able to talk with Beth and call Ann and Jackie and you know, talk with others of you and um, um, with Judy and um, because those are things that that ought to be discerned in community. Not by one person, but they ought to be discerned in community. Um, you know, if I was, and you remind me of this if that day comes sometime, if I made a decision I wasn't going to be pastor here anymore, I hope I wouldn't make it alone. I hope that I would come here and say to you all, I'm thinking about not being pastor anymore. Let's pray about it, and you help me with that discernment. Does that make sense? I would hope that if one of you had a, a very difficult decision to make in life about something, that you might come as your pastor and say, hey, could the church gather around me? And I could share with them what my dilemma is um, so that you could pray with me about it and we could talk about it. And, and, and you could help me in that decision. I believe that's part of spiritual discernment, is being able to learn how to use others, how to use community uh, to make some very important decisions in life. Not just what the color of the carpet should be. Not just who should we use to repair the roof. Those are important decisions. But about some of the more essential questions in each of our lives where community can be brought together to make spiritual discernment. May we have the heart of Solomon that above all what we ask of God is not long life or riches or to defeat our enemies or honor, but that God may give us wise hearts to discern what is right in all of our decisions of life. Thanks be to God for the gift of God's sermon. Amen.